Do you think a recruiter can read hundreds of resumes in a day? No. So they use a software which is do that until unless you're expecting a packet from the recruiter. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Neha and you're watching In Me Australia. Are you moving to Australia soon? Or are you planning to move to Australia soon and are thinking, how can I get a job as quickly as possible? Are you scared about applying for jobs in Australia? Are you scared about interviews in Australia? Do you want to know more about how can you avoid rookie mistakes while applying for a job in Australia? If the answer to all of these questions were yes, then keep on watching this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about five mistakes that you should avoid while applying for a job here in Australia. So without further ado, let's get started with today's video. All right, now you have landed in Australia and it's day five. You have logged on to Seek, Indeed, LinkedIn. You have all these job openings and you are excited and ready to apply. You find your old resume and you start applying to these jobs. You upload these resumes to all these hundreds of jobs that you find on these random websites. And 10 days later, you get no calls. That has happened to me. That has happened to a lot of people I have known who have moved to Australia and have struggled to find their jobs initially. What is the reason for it? There can be a multiple reasons for this, but one of the reasons is that you have not changed your resume or modified the resume according to the Australian job market. So the Australian job market is different to the job market that you were used to. For me, it would be India because I am originally from India. Now, your resume A should not have personal information such as your gender, your pronouns, because your resume should be a short snapshot about you. These are the things that a recruiter might be interested in knowing in an interview, but not on a resume, which should be short, sharp and impressive. Number two, your resume is way too long. If you have been in the industry for 40 years and you worked in newspaper agency when you were 14, you don't need to put all of that in your resume. Your resume should be maximum two pages long for a seasoned professional. If you are a fresh grad, try to finish it up in one page while capturing all the juicy content. So cut the grass so that you can see the tiger. You don't want to add fluff into your resume, so make it short and sharp. Number three, you are not using a cover letter. A cover letter is very important while applying for jobs in Australia. In many of the jobs, the company would specifically ask you to upload a cover letter. Don't ignore this. Even if the job position doesn't ask you to upload a cover letter, go for it. And the cover letter cannot be same for all jobs. You need to make some changes to the cover letter while applying for different jobs. That's like an unsaid rule, but not many follow. So have a baseline cover letter, but when you are applying for different companies, different positions, make sure you tailor it according to the job description. The next mistake is your resume has too many vague words, which is I'm a self-starter or I'm a motivated worker, whatever it is, you need to make your resume ATS friendly. Now, what is ATS? A lot of recruiters these days use ATS, which is applicant tracking system. For a single job position, they get hundreds and hundreds of resumes. Do you think a recruiter can read hundreds of resumes in a day? No. So they use a software, which is ATS, which is basically an artificial intelligent software which scans the resumes, filters out the unwanted resume or applicants that is not suitable for the position and gets the suitable candidates to the recruiter. Now, when you are filtered through the system, the recruiter will now read, let's say the ATS found 25 eligible candidates. The recruiter will now go through the 25 resumes. So you need to make sure that your resume is ATS compliant. There are several softwares available online for free where you can just upload your resume and see if it is ATS compliant or not. So make sure you do that. So your resume should be short, should be sharp, should not have irrelevant information, should yet cover all the important information that it needs to have. 
should be ATS compliant. You should have a base cover letter ready that you can use to apply for jobs and always, always try to upload a cover letter while applying for a role. That is very important here in Australia. And the last one is try to avoid professional headshots because that sometimes leads to biases. So unless you're applying for a lead role in a movie, you don't need to have your professional headshot or your picture on your resume that just occupies important space that can be used to give some other important information about you. Remember, you need to have your resume fit into one page. A headshot will take some space. Avoid it if you can. The other mistake that a lot of people make while applying for jobs is that they focus a lot on their really old work experiences. Maybe you were a director at a startup 20 years ago. That's good to know information, but do not focus a lot on that. Focus on your recent experiences while talking about it in the interview or while mentioning it in, on your resume. You should focus on your new experiences rather than old experiences. They are important, they play a role in your resume, but do not focus on them a lot. Until and unless it was a really reputable position, as I said, a director at or a, a CEO at a startup is something you would want to highlight. But a sales consultant in a mid-level firm is something that you can mention, but do not focus on it a lot in the interview or even on the resume. Focus on your new experiences rather than your old experiences. Always mention your experiences in reverse chronological order, which means start with your newest experiences and then go on to the oldest experience. That's how it should be on your resume. One other mistake that I see a lot of people make is they mention the entire mailing address on the resume. You don't need to do that unless you're expecting a packet from the recruiter, which is quite unlikely. Sometimes you are applying to a job in a different city and recruiters would only want to interview candidates that are in the same city. They wouldn't even know that you are willing to relocate by just reading your resume. So to avoid the confusion, so to avoid the fear of getting filtered out, it's best that you avoid mentioning your entire mailing address on the resume itself. You can bring it up in the interview when the interviewer asks, where are you based? Or if you're willing to relocate or not. And then you have a chance to convince them that you are a suitable candidate because you're willing to relocate. Looking at a resume, that might raise some eyebrows. So it's better that if you're applying specially for roles that are not in your city, in your state, it's better to not mention your mailing address on your resume. There's so many other things that you need to avoid while you're applying for jobs in Australia, but this video has been long enough. So I'm gonna stop talking now. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I am making a part two very soon. And if you want to watch what other mistakes you should avoid while applying for a job in Australia, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that bell notification icon so that you are notified when I upload a video. Like this video so it reaches many other people Share it with your friends. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions and I will see you in my next video. Bye.